Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The reading from the Hebrew scripture is from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called to Amminadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet to the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. 
And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. The second reading is a reading from Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes. Then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed, already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, it seems like any time I go online, the start page of the browser is always filled with boxes that are misleading, agitating, and incendiary, and they always have those little article titles at the top of them. And I know that all of these boxes are clickbait, and on rare occasions there might be something that looks like it might possibly be truthful or interesting, but usually it's not. The headlines in each box are designed to catch my attention and to see what I like so that perhaps then that algorithm can feed me more of that stuff. The opinion sections of newspapers or magazines or other news organization sites are at least labeled as opinion so that you know that what you are getting when you click on them is not intended to be news but rather an interpretation of the news. But I have also noticed that many of them are written in such a way that there can be no other sensible or reasonable way of understanding a particular event or policy or whatever else might be talking about than that of the author. And that's especially apparent when you come to the end of those articles and you get to the list of shoulds and musts that the government or some other entity needs to do to enact these eminently reasonable and completely unobjectionable reforms or policy changes, or social changes. One thing, though, that is missing from all of these is a sense of humility, or any sort of acknowledgement that the proposals, or ideas, or understandings may actually, in the long run, turn out to be flawed. And I can understand why people who have made it their life's work to research and deeply understand a particular issue would bristle at any suggestion that they are wrong or that they don't know what they're talking about. Then there are those writers for whom there is basically one answer to all problems, whatever they may be. There is no consideration that maybe different issues need different approaches. I feel like that as this society has become ever more polarized, it has become much less acceptable to admit that we can be wrong, that we can reconsider anything or that we can change our minds based on new experiences or new information. Being unyielding and insisting on being right is a strength, and acknowledging any sort of doubt or nuance is a weakness. And I see that really across all institutions, including at times even the church. There may have been debates over contentious subjects, but now those debates are settled, and everyone either gets in line or gets out. We know what we know, we know it is correct, and we know that no one can change what we think. The most important part of the Gospel reading today, I think, comes at the very end. Jesus says, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. The Pharisees in this reading already know everything that they need to know. There is no other way of knowing or of understanding. Even with a man born blind who can now see standing right in front of them, a man whose own parents say he was born blind, well, they are not able to accept what they are seeing. His presence is not acceptable. It is at best inconvenient. So he is therefore driven out of their presence. They say that they see and that they understand, but do they really? This is, not, this is something this blind man who now sees is something that does not happen, not the way that it is told in this reading. They know how things actually work. Well, as you've heard me say many times, God's ways are not our ways. And God tends to work outside of what we know. And that is what opens our eyes to see. The knowledge of the Pharisees in this gospel reading is not sight, but self-imposed blindness. In the first reading, the Lord has Samuel call for the youngest of Jesse's son, the last one who should ever be considered as an anointed one. 
because everyone knows that the oldest son is the favored one, but not in this case. These readings, especially this gospel, are invitations for us in this season to examine the things that we know, stuff that we know so well that we can't consider any other alternative or perhaps that we don't know it at all. And that type of certainty is actually the opposite of faith. It closes off any chance for God to work in us, and it leaves us blind to the world around us, the world as it really is, not as how we would prefer to see it. The gospel is not just about Jesus opening the eyes of a blind man, miraculous as that is. It is about Jesus trying to open the eyes of those who would rather not see, whose blinkered sight has truly left them blind. And that really could also be any of us at any time. A question for us to consider, perhaps in this time of Lent that is left to us and also beyond, is how is God trying to open our eyes? And what are those things God is trying to get us to see that we would rather not? Amen. Please stand and let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We begin first with our Trilog prayer. Almighty God, we come before you to ask grace and wisdom for all who are called to discern your mission for the church in Wisconsin. Guide us to listen to one another in humility and to always seek your will. We pray in the name of Jesus, the head of the church. Amen. Amen. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop provisional, and Mike, our rector, and for our parish families, especially Pat, Eric, Ricky, Matthew, Gavin, and Emerson, George and Cindy, Lucy and Dennis, Darian and Alyssa, Bob and Sibby, Kurt, Linda, Gabe, and Michael. And for those celebrating birthdays, especially Ricky, Anne, John, Matilda, Ed, Jeannie, Linda, Joan, Kathleen, and Valerie, and for healing and comfort, especially for Amy, Ann, Ann, Barbara, Burley, Colum, Chris, Dave, Dick, Ed, Jennifer, Joe, Julie, Kelly, Marion, Mary, Mariah, Nathaniel, Pat, Phyllis, Richard, Shelley, Marlene, and Bruce. We pray especially for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa and for Christ Church La Crosse. 
we continue with form one. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Church of God, for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president and the leaders of all nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the, the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for widows and orphans, for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. From deliverance of all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering, without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all of our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Gina. Um, the choir anthem today is another version of Psalm 23. It's found in your hymnals on page, um, in hymn number four, 645. So in order to appreciate the, the anthem a little bit better, we'll be singing verses 1, 2, 4, and six, and to a different, um, to a different tune, and then with an added kind of an anthem, I think maybe a little St. Patrick's Day Irish prayer. Um, it includes in the text, God before me, God beside me, God behind me, God above me, and in the end, when they when they ask, when they say, Good Shepherd, may I sing thy praise? It's may I sing your praise for living in my heart. Lee? Uh, just want to quickly announce that we have hired a uh, new campus minister for United Campus Ministry. We're very excited. Mary's uh, husband just accepted a job here at Gunderson. They're moving from Georgia. And so we are very excited to uh, welcome her uh, at the United Campus Ministry. There is an open house. If you've never been there, please join us this afternoon after church. Uh, light refreshments, get a tour of the building, and find out more about the campus ministry. It's at 1334 Pine, and there are some handouts in the back that talk about uh, our new minister and the ministry that we do there with the college students right across the street at UWL. Thank you. So just a couple of more announcements. Um, you have heard us talk about the coronation breakfast. Well, it's going to happen. It's going to be May 6th. 
it is going to start very early in the morning because a reasonable time in London is a not so reasonable time in La Crosse. So the doors will open at five because we anticipate that the ceremony will start at 11 o'clock London time. Um, tickets are available right now to parishioners. Um, John Birchill will be at the back of church if you would like to buy any. They are $20 for adults, $10 for children. It is uh, going to be a huge, mostly English breakfast, along with other um, pastries and desserts available um, on the 6th. And then also we'll be opening that up to other people as well. So if you want to, to get your tickets, get them now. The Lenten, downtown Lenten Church um, Prayer service with lunch is continuing. Uh, it's going to be at noon this Wednesday at First Congregational Church over on Main and Losey. And then our own, um, uh, excuse me, I just lost my train of thought. Our own Lenten programming continues on Wednesday night, and we will have Eucharist at 5.30 over in the chapel at the St. George Chapel, followed by a lunch or a dinner and a program thereafter. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries today? Well, Matilda's trying to hide. <laughs> so what number is this? Eighth. Eighth birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Matilda as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. 
Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.